Paper one, question 5a, the derivative of f of x can be expressed in the form f dash x uh, as complete of square form, where a, b and c are elements of the integers and x is a real. Part one, find the value of a, the value of b and the value of c. So first of all, <clears throat> as you can see here, we need to differentiate it because it's asking us for f dash of x. So we need to differentiate our function uh, f of x. So they've given us f of x. Uh, which is uh, 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 12x plus 3. And we now need to differentiate that. So f of x, f dash x is going to be, well, 3 times 2 is 6x squared plus 6 times 2 is 12. Reduce my power, just becomes to the power 1. And then minus 12, and we drop the constant so 6x squared plus 12x minus 12. And we need to write that in the complete the square form. So first of all here, I'm going to factorize out something that's common. We can factorize out the 6. So I'm going to rewrite it as 6 times 1x squared plus 2x minus 2. So all I've done is I've just factorized out the 6. Then I'm going to uh, do a little bit of work with what's inside the bracket. So it's going to be, well, my first step of completing the square is always taking the coefficient of the x, which is 2, halving it, or dividing by 2, which is 1, and squaring it. So you divide by 2 and square your answer, which is 1. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to rewrite my quadratic then as x squared plus 2x, and I'm going to add on that 1, and I'm going to subtract that 1, and then put back in my constant of negative 2. So as we know, we haven't done anything wrong there. All we've done is added and subtracted 1, which gets me back to 0. Then I'm going to focus in on the x squared plus 2x plus 1 part, and then the negative 1, negative 2. So I'm doing two separate sections here. So I'm going to factorize out x squared plus 2x plus 1. And when I factorize that, well, the factors of 1 are 1 and 1. And I have to get to positive 2. So it's simply just x plus 1 times x plus 1. And then when I go minus 2 take, or minus 1 take 2, I get negative 3. So that's quite simple. And then that's going to leave me with 6 times x plus 1 by x plus 1 is the same as x plus 1 squared, negative 3. My final step now is just to multiply back in that 6, which is going to leave me with 6 times x plus 1 all to be squared, and then 6 by negative 3 is negative 18. And I'm practically finished. All I have to do now is fill in my a, b, and c. My a is the factor, which is 6. My b is the plus 1. And my C, the constant, which is my negative 18. Okay, that is part A. Scrolling down now to part 2. If G of X is equal to 36X plus 5, find the range of values of X for which F dash X is greater than G dash of X. So you can see here uh, that there's a we're still into differentiation here. So let's just write down what they're asking us to find. F dash of x is greater than g dash of x. Okay, so when we write that out, we know from up above that f dash of x is the same as 6 bracket x plus 1 all to be squared minus 18. Uh, you can write it as the equation if you want. You don't need to write it in the completed the square form. I just am for this part. And that's greater than g dash of x. So if I differentiate 36 x plus 5, I simply just get 36. All I'm going to do now is a bit of uh, simple tidying up. I'm going to move that negative 18 over to the constant of 36. So that's leaving me with 6 times x plus 1 all to be squared greater than 36 plus 18. So that is 6 times x plus 1 all to be squared greater than 36 plus 18, which is 54. I'm going to divide across by that 6, so that leaves me with x plus 1 all to be squared, greater than 54 over 6. 54 divided by 6 is 9, so that's leaving me with x plus 1 all to be squared is greater than 9. Now I'm going to focus in on how to get rid of a square. Um, so to get rid of that square, I need to get the square root. 
So square root both sides. So that's going to give me the square root of x plus 1 all to be squared is greater than 9 uh, square root. Now we know that a square will cancel with a square root, so that's my left hand side dealt with. So that's just leaving me with x plus 1 is greater than the square root of 9, which is plus or minus 3, because 3 by 3 is 9 or negative 3 by negative 3 is 9. So I just need to solve for both positive 3 and negative 3. So I have x plus 1 is greater than positive 3, and I have x plus 1 is greater than negative 3. So I just need to do both of those out. Uh, so that is leaving me with um, x is equal to 3 take away 1. So that's giving me uh, 2. And I also have x uh, is minus 3 take away 1. So x is equal to negative 4. So there are my two solutions for x. It wants to find the range of values. So I just need to now just do a quick sketch here just to see what we're looking at. So if I plot those two roots, I have positive 2 and I have negative 4. So it's just a rough sketch here, nothing uh, spectacular. And if we go back up to part A, it's a positive uh, function. So that's going to be the U shape, a parabola. So it looks something like that. And it wants us now to find the range of values where it is greater than uh, g dash of x. So that's everywhere above the x-axis. So remember in our question here, we're working with the greater than symbol. So I'm looking basically for everywhere uh, above the x-axis here and here. So what are those values or the range of values? So we could have x is less than negative 4. So everything uh, below negative 4. So this region here. And we also have everything above 2. So everything greater than 2. So and x is greater than positive 2. So that is the solution to part 2 of question 5. Now looking at part b. So the diagram below shows t the tangent line to h of x and it has a point where x is equal to pi over 6. a is the point 0 k where k is an element of the reals and it is the cuts the y-axis. Find the value of k. So that's the aim of the game here is to find the value of k. Just going to explain briefly what I'm going to do here before I get into it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate my function for my curve. When I differentiate the function, I'm getting a formula for the slope of that curve at any particular point or the rate of change. And by doing that, as I said, I'm going to get a formula for the slope of the curve. I'm then going to sub in the x coordinate pi over 6, which is going to give me the slope of the curve at that particular point there. When I find the slope of the curve, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to uh, find the uh, equation of that line. And by doing that, it, I need to find um, two points. I need to have the point A, which is 0, K, but I also need to know what is the point here where the slope is found. And in order to do that, I'm going to sub in my pi over 6 into the original function, and that will get me my y value here. So there is my two points on that tangent t. And from that then, I'm going to form the equation of the line. So a bit of work involved in it, but that's just giving you a brief uh, synopsis of what I'm going to do now. So like I said, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate my function h of x. So h of x is equal to uh, 2 sine times 2x. So I'm going to differentiate a trigonometric function here. So h dash of x is equal to, well it's the chain rule here, so I need to differentiate the 2x becomes 2 multiplied by the factor at the front, so 2 times 2 is 4. Sine will become cos and then my 2x. So differentiating 2 sine 2x becomes 4 cos 2 of x. Now, like I said, that is now a rate of change, a formula for the slope on this particular curve. Now, we know that pi over 6 sits on that curve. So what I'm going to do is when I sub in pi over 6, I'm going to find the slope at that particular point. So that's all I'm doing next. I'm subbing in pi over 6. So that's going to become uh, 4 times cos uh, pi over 6. 
So that's all I'm doing there is I'm subbing in that pi over six. And then I'm going to evaluate that on my calculator, which is giving me, uh, sorry, I've just lost my two. Don't forget this two here. And when I do that out of my calculator, I get a slope of two. So again, don't forget when you differentiate, you're finding the slope. So the slope at that particular point here is two. So the slope of that uh, tangent is two. So let's find a point now on that line. So we want to find that particular point. What is this coordinate? We know that it's pi over six something. It's not pi over six zero. Uh, zero is the point on the x-axis. We need to find that y coordinate. So all I'm gonna do there now is I'm gonna sub pi over six back into my original h of x. So h of x is equal to two sine two of x. I'm now subbing in pi over six back into that function. So h of pi over six is equal to two times sine times two of pi over six. So that's what I'm gonna do out my calculator. Again, at this stage, it's no harm to mention. Just remember your calculator is in radians at all times here now. So therefore, h of pi over six is equal to, when I do that out of my calculator, I'm getting root three. So that means that coordinate uh, that I've marked there in green on my diagram, this coordinate is now going to be written as pi over six root three. That's that coordinate. And you can now see that I have our tangent t and it has two points now on that line. So all I'm going to do now is form the equation of the line. That's all I'm going to do now in order to solve for k. So the equation of the line, as we know from our log tables, so equation of line is written as y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Now I know a lot of information here, my two points uh, I have and my slope I also have. So subbing that in with the point that I know, the pi over six and the root three gets me y minus y1, my y1 is root three is equal to m, which is two times x minus pi over six. And just tidying that up, I get y minus root three is equal to multiplying in that two, two times x is two x, and two times pi over six is two pi over six, which simplifies down to uh, pi over three. If you want to write it like that, I'm just gonna leave it as two pi over six. I'm now just going to move over the root three to the right hand side. So that is getting me y is equal to two x minus two pi over six uh, plus root three. Okay, so there's our equation of the line in the form y equals mx plus c. You didn't have to rearrange it like that, but now we're gonna come back up to my picture. Remember now at this stage that the point a 0k sits on that equation of the line. So if I sub in 0 for x and k for y, we should solve that equation. So y is now changing to our uh, k. So this, remember that this is x, y. So that's going to become y, which is k, is equal to 2 times 0 minus 2 pi over 6, which again is pi over 3, plus root 3. So that means that k is equal to 2 times 0, which is 0. So that's minus uh, 2 pi over 6 plus root 3. And I'm just going to come up here because I'm running out of space. So that means then that k is equal to minus 2 pi over 6 plus root 3 on my calculator is giving me 0 0.68. Now the question at the start said find the value of k correct at two decimal points and that's what we have. k is equal to 0 0.68. And that's the solution to question five.